Recording has begun. Um, the general population is being um, allowed into the meeting at this time. For those of us, uh, for those of you that are uh, on the Zoom call, uh, welcome. Um, would like to remind us that uh, for security uh, purposes, we will we would definitely prefer that uh, cameras be um, engaged. Uh, again, for security purposes, we do um, expect that cameras are engaged. Uh, Madam Vice Chair, I'll uh, turn it over to you. Thank you. The Clarksville Montgomery County study session is called to order. Mr. House. Yes, ma'am. The, the first item on the agenda uh, is our uh, hazard mitigation plan update. And uh, this is actually a plan, an update that is done every so often uh, in the, not only with the Clarksville Montgomery County school system, but it's done in conjunction with the, uh, the county, uh, the city of Clarksville, as well as uh, other uh, institutions like Austin P. Um, this 2020 plan update was completed with the assistance of several individuals. It's not just a CMCSS plan. It's more of a uh, community collaborative to, uh, to provide the kind of support that, uh, that needs to be. Um, this plan, this is actually the third update uh, of this plan since uh, becoming a multi-jurisdiction plan, including, like I said, uh, the city of Clarksville, um, CMCSS, uh, and, uh, and other um, institutions and agencies, including private organizations and businesses uh, and academia. So uh, be glad to answer any questions uh, in reference to this resolution uh, at this time. Thank you, Madam, Madam Vice Chair. I'll move on to the second item uh, on the agenda, which is another uh, resolution. Uh, this particular resolution is specifically geared towards uh, the BEP. Uh, as we know, um, uh, the last six months have been uh, filled with peaks and valleys and uncertainties. And um, in, in accordance with several other school districts across the state, uh, we've taken time to, um, to really band together. Uh, so not only uh, with your support, the Clarksville Montgomery County School System would move forward with this resolution to essentially indicate and ask the General Assembly uh, to, to hold harmless uh, the BEP. And essentially in, in layman terms, we would uh, ask that the BEP not be touched in terms of funding, regardless of uh, enrollment changes, uh, uncertainties uh, over the course of the next year. Uh, state funding would be included here as well as federal funding. Uh, so this is just a safeguard uh, and we would love to to see the, the board support uh, in reference to this, this resolution uh, as we move forward uh, into 2021 and really the uncertainties uh, that might be ahead of us. I'd be glad to answer any questions in reference to this item as well. Mr. House, uh, Charlie Patterson, uh, excuse me, back on, I didn't have a chance, uh, back on that uh, mitigation, it, it's got worded, you know, that we're approving it proving it tonight, I would hope the, the date would be changed uh, from the 25th until our next formal meeting. Thank you for catching that, uh, Mr. Patterson. Um, uh, Mrs. Long, if you would um, ensure that uh, the necessary modification happens there, uh, because this is definitely not an approval as, as Mr. Patterson, this is the first read. So thank you, Mr. Patterson. I have a question on the second. Uh resolution, Mr. House? Mr. Garland, I think you said something. We didn't quite hear you, though. Yeah, I have a question on concerning the second resolution. Now, we're asking them not to hold uh, the school system harmless for pay, I mean, for funding purposes. Uh, what are we going to do for the teachers as far as uh, we're going into a new method of teaching and everything? Are we going to try to uh, get them to hold them harmless as well? Or have that already been done? When you say hold them harmless, you mean in, in reference to salaries or? No, oh, I'm talking about as far as the, the grading and the stuff like that, you know, where uh, each year we are, we, we 
give the teacher a certain grade uh, for the work that they've done. Now we're going to ask for the, them to be held harmless as well because this is a new era that we're going into. So you mean from from the standpoint of evaluations? Yes, sir. Got it. Yes. There are there are standards and guidelines in place in reference to what virtual um, uh, virtual uh, evaluations uh, look like. Um, Dr. Imperatrice, if you'd like to share some of those details at this time, I know your, your team has, has worked closely to ensure that we deploy um, those guidelines uh, that the state has uh, placed on, uh, on their website and delivered uh, through the commissioner's updates. Yeah, so they have adjusted the evaluation for virtual and it, it, it talks about engaging students. It, it, it talks about um, providing timely feedback. So it's, it's very much aligned with, with virtual and then traditional would be, be evaluated uh, through the regular team document. Uh, I think Mr. Garland too, what you might be talking about is there's a portion of the evaluation that is based on the end of the year tests. And in this resolution, it does state that we would be, we would hold our teachers harmless in the district harmless for the end of the year testing as it relates to evaluation and grading of the district. Thank you. Any additional questions in reference to either one of the, the resolutions would be glad to uh, take them at this time. Mr. Goss, you mentioned the second resolution that you were working together with other districts. Is that mainly the um, Middle Tennessee or is that all of Tennessee or is that Clinton National? Are you mm -hmm. using? Great question. Actually, um, uh, the TOS organization for, for superintendents across the state uh, has, has encouraged that to happen. I know several in the Mid-Cumberland area have moved forward to do so, uh, but uh, TOS is actually uh, asking every school district in the state of Tennessee, all 146, to uh, provide those resolutions and encouraging um, those resolutions to come to them so they can post them collectively on their website. Um, so some of those are on uh, TOSS's website already, uh, and uh, if approved in the second read in a you know in a couple weeks, uh, ours ours would be too. But it um, it's something that's happening across the state. I always feel like there's more power in brain power of many is superior to the opinion of one. Agreed, absolutely. Madam Vice Chair, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. County Commissioner comments at this time? Are there any? Thank you. Any additional business? Board um, members? I would like to say that your departure from this school board just adds another layer of sadness to our worried world. But please always remember how very much board has appreciated your eight years of dedication and devotion and your passion for CNCSS students and programs. You will truly be missed, but maybe someday you will return to the school board as to Charlie Patterson, Jimmy Garland, and Kit Griffin. And Juliet's words from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, party such sweet song, rang so true tonight. We love you and appreciate you. Anyone else? I would just like to hit on what uh, Margaret just stated. Uh, Anne is going to definitely be missed. Uh, you know, she has brought a lot to the table. Uh, her seat, uh, the person that's taking her seat, has a big, has big shoes to fall to fit. Uh, so the bottom line is, Anne, I assure you that we will continue to go forward and continue to do what's right for the children of Montgomery County. And thank you so much for your work. And I feel the same way as Mr. Garland and Ms. Pace. Truly appreciate the time and effort that you spent the last eight years on the school board. Uh, it's been a pleasure getting to know you and work with you. I wish you nothing but the best. And although I work with you two years, Anne, I do will miss you, your sincerity, your kind heart, and always the students first, and what's in the best interest of our students. I will miss you and I'll stay in touch with you. May God bless you. Good luck to you, Charlie Patterson. And uh, I met Ms. Perry, were you fixing to join them? Uh, 
the meeting, adjourn the meeting after this, or or is the director having any comments or the board member? I will have. I'll ask if there's any further comments or business. Yes, ma'am. I, I do have some comments that I'd like to to uh, to share. And at this time, I'll um, provide those comments uh, both in in writing and and verbally uh, here. Wanted to just share uh, as we uh, are on pace of course start school um, on the 31st, which is Monday. I wanted to share some enrollment numbers, um, specifically more so the, the, the virtual school enrollment. Um, as you may know, um, at the elementary level, uh, we have about uh, close to, close to 7,000 students that have been enrolled in our K-12 virtual school. Uh, at the middle school level, just over about 4,000 students uh, that, uh, that have enrolled uh, in our virtual school. And at the high school level, uh, about 4,200 students. In total, uh, virtual school students, uh, we've enrolled uh, over 15,000, as you can see. Uh, so on the flip side, from a traditional standpoint, uh, we have about 21,300 students um, that have enrolled so far. So that makes up the about 36,500 students that we have in the school district and uh, of course on a daily basis we're continuing to grow. So I wanted to share those numbers. Uh, I've tried to provide uh, that information and insight both in our uh, Friday Courier uh, as well as uh, my, my comments, board meetings and study sessions. So um, I will uh, again provide these inf this information in, in this Friday's Courier also. Um, just wanted to, to remind uh, everyone it was on the calendar uh, that Friday is actually a a, um, a non-work day for our instructional staff um, at our school buildings. Um, so our, our um, Gracie offices will be uh, closed for, for business uh, from, in, in reference to the public on this coming Friday. Individuals will be in Gracie um, getting prepared for Monday, but uh, we will be closed to, uh, to the public on Friday. Just wanted you all to be aware of that. Uh, next item. Middle school uh, number eight, um, uh, with, with the pandemic and all that's gone on, there has uh, continued to be work uh, on the middle school. Of course, we did provide an update a couple weeks ago in terms of the progress of, of the, um, um, the, the team that, uh, that works on this. Um, but just this past Monday, we did receive some, some information and insight from, uh, from Mayor Durrett uh, in reference to something that's very timely, and I wanted to share with you all what that what that is. Um, it's it's going to be important that architectural design fees are uh, brought uh, to you all as a board very soon, uh, and uh, because of the timeliness of this and the process and what's involved, uh, there's going to have to be a pretty uh, pretty expedited approval uh, or disapproval uh, of these architectural fees. CMCS, as you can see. It's to provide a total amount uh, uh, and, and bullet points uh, for resolution by tomorrow uh, in an effort to stay on pace to ensure that the resolution can be eventually approved. So there's been a lot of progress. Uh, the second item here uh, is um, this fairly simple. CMCSS presents the funding resolution. Uh, and this is really just a, a, a time bar in reference to what needs to happen. Um, for these design fees uh, for middle school number eight. Uh, this will again come to you uh, on 9-1. On uh, following uh, that presentation of, of the resolution, uh, we would really need to go into a special session uh, so that uh, the vote uh, on the resolution can be approved or disapproved. And um, uh, we generally like to, uh, to take things slow, but of course, if we, if we don't, uh, we were informed that if we don't get this approved fairly quick, then um, that we could be in jeopardy of, of, of the process being slowed down. Next item here uh, in terms of next steps is uh, if, if you all approve the resolution on 921, uh, it would uh, move on uh, to, uh, to be finalized and delivered to the courthouse uh, the following day, uh, which would be 9220. Uh, thereafter, we would, um, uh, you all as a board would uh, present or my staff present the resolution uh, to the full county commission uh, that evening uh, for the informal board meeting on 9-2. Uh, 
And then finally, the, the, the county commission would vote to approve or disapprove the resolution during uh, the formal session. Um, so again, just wanted you all to be aware of that process. I will send this uh, to you all so you'll have these steps. But again, we got information uh, just yesterday uh, via our operation staff of kind of the expedited nature of, uh, of what needs to happen here. Uh, so if you have questions, um, you know, feel free to, to reach out to myself uh, and we'll uh, have, uh, have insight for you before it actually comes, uh, comes to you uh, next week. Um, just as a FYI, I've heard from, uh, from, from some of you uh, in reference to next steps uh, and, and board meetings. Of course, our next study session is, is next week. Uh, place that picture on the screen because I'm sure uh, many of us missed that room. And uh, looking forward to, to getting back to that room. Uh, in my conversations with, uh, with some of you, uh, you've indicated uh, that you would love to see us back in session. So uh, we've worked hard to prepare uh, the boardroom uh, to be physically distanced. And um, uh, so our next uh, study session will be in person. Uh, on 9-9-1-20 next week. Uh, so we uh, are looking forward to, to getting um, back to business in a, in a different fashion in person. Looking forward to seeing many of you that I haven't had a chance to, to lay eyes on in quite some time, and I'm sure you all are looking forward to doing the same. Couple of items. Um, as I've indicated in the past, we'd like uh, to share our FFCRA data uh, with you all. Currently, as you can see, uh, we have 51 uh, individuals uh, that are on FFCRA um, leave right now. We have uh, none that are currently pending, which is a good thing. Uh, we, we've had 12, and this is as of today, uh, that have inquired. Um, as, you can lead, as you can see in that middle section, uh, in terms of school level absentee rate uh, for illness, uh, we've had school level um, certified individuals, we've got about 80 that are absent, school level classified, uh, 31, school level cafeteria and custodians, about 17. Uh, the last section there is, of course, our, our transportation, transportation um, section, uh, and that um, uh, has, has been a struggle uh, for several different school districts. We're, of course, still hiring, um, but it's, it's still a difficult, difficult um, uh, area to, to find individuals in. Transportation and Operations Department has worked extremely hard to continue to bring individuals in. As you can see, uh, we've got um, uh, 27 there that uh, absent uh, vacancies are still at uh, about 37 in terms of bus drivers. Um, employees uh, and, and athletes, uh, I've had this question from a few of you in reference to individuals uh, that have uh, in one way or another reported either being exposed uh, to COVID-19 or reporting uh, actual cases. We've had overall uh, this year so far uh, about 141 reports uh, from, uh, from employees. Uh, we've had 24 uh, total reports from athletes and uh, in accordance to those athletes that have reported uh, we've had 110 uh, total quarantines uh, in reference to our athletes. So I wanted to, you know, continuously keep you updated in reference to what that data uh, looks like as well. Uh, as we look at our multiple matrix, this is a part of that matrix. Uh, I think it's important for us to know uh, where our work, workforce is and, uh, and ensure that we, we have the capacity to continue operating uh, in the manner that we need to. Um, this, uh, I think, continues to be a concern across the state of Tennessee uh, in reference to whether school districts uh, have an increased uh, number of reporting and quarantines. Um, I think this could become uh, an issue. Uh, hopefully it does not. Uh, if it does uh, become an issue, it's one of the items uh, that we will take into consideration uh, as we move to, uh, to make those determinations on a day-to-day, -day, uh, whether we move forward and, um, and go completely remote or not. Uh, we're not there and, uh, and hopefully won't get there. Student meal pickup, uh, of course, with the number of individual students that uh, will be uh, in, uh, in virtual K-12 school, um, we will have several students that 
uh, we'll be doing mail pickups. And as you can see, um, Tuesday, September the uh, 1st from, uh, from 1 to 2 p.m., uh, we'll start that process at each student's enrolled school. Uh, so again, students can go to their school to pick up meals. Our operations and child nutrition department has worked extremely hard. Uh, and what we're gonna be doing is serving essentially um, a week's worth of meal, uh, meals uh, when parents come to pick up. Uh, so they'll come on that particular day and, uh, and pick up um, a 10 meals, uh, which is the breakfast and the lunch uh, for the week. All meals uh, should be purchased in advance. Uh, and that's extremely important uh, because this is a different process. And what we don't want to do is acquire uh, a great amount of debt. Um, so uh, we're going to ask that our community parents uh, fill out the necessary paperwork, uh, especially for free and reduced lunch, uh, and also plan ahead to ensure that, uh, that lunches are, are taken care of and, uh, and that there is a positive balance on, um, on their lunch accounts. Critical infrastructure, you all may have heard that uh, this was a designation uh, that our governor uh, focused on that any school district could take advantage of. And, and what this is, 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 uh, is an allowance for educators to, to come to work uh, if they're exposed uh, to COVID-19 or even living with someone uh, who's tested positive as long as they don't uh, have any symptoms uh, and wear a mask. Uh, again, this is an option for school districts. And um, there are a handful of school districts in the state of Tennessee that have uh, moved forward to implement uh, this, uh, this critical infrastructure uh, designation as a, as a school system. CMCSS uh, will not uh, adhere to this designation for, for any of our employees. Um, so I had that question to come up um, from a couple of you and I wanted to make sure to share exactly where we stood as a, as a school system in terms of the critical infrastructure designation. Last couple things that I'll share, uh, mask, uh, physical distancing. Uh, this has been a, uh, a very hot topic uh, across the state of Tennessee, really across the country. And I wanted to, uh, to re, uh, reiterate uh, that uh, face masks requirement. Uh, and it's, uh, it's based on local and state uh, CDC guidelines, American Academy of Pedi Pediatrics guidelines as well. Uh, all students are required to wear masks in all common areas uh, in the school building and when physical distancing cannot be maintained anywhere in the building. And I want to reiterate that not only for us as board members, you all as board members, but for our community as well. Um, there, there can and will be instances where uh, physical distancing might not be able to, to be accomplished. And if that is the case, uh, then the expectation will be that uh, students, staff uh, wear a mask in those situations. That could be uh, in some classrooms, that could be in some other areas. Um, I would like to share one piece that, um, um, that our uh, information and communication staff has, has focused on to really give our, our community a, a snapshot of what to expect uh, in, our, in our buildings. And- uh, As CMCSS, Prepares to open schools. For Let's see. Are you guys seeing that video on the screen? No. Okay. no. Let me start again here. How about now? Are you guys seeing it now? No pictures. Yes. yes. Okay. As CMCSS prepares to open schools for the 2020-21 school year, there will be increased precautions in place on our buses. Prior to arriving at the bus stop, parents should pre-screen their students for symptoms of COVID-19 at home each morning. Students will be required to wear a mask while on CMCSS buses. Physical distancing is encouraged at the bus stop. While the bus is loading, students must wait for direction from the driver. Students should load one at a time. Once that student has cleared the stairway, the next student may enter the bus. As students board the bus, hand sanitizer will be available near the bus entrance. Students will have assigned seats. All windows will remain open, weather permitting. Buses will be disinfected, a minimum of twice daily. As always, 
good behavior is expected on the bus and at the bus stops. While the bus is unloading, students must wait for direction from the driver. The driver will unload, starting with seat one, working from the front to the back. For information on bus routes, visit cmcss.net. So I wanted to just share a, a snapshot of, of what we're trying to do um, in, in CMCSS and, and give parents a, um, a look into uh, what some of the changes will look like. There will be additional videos around uh, safety and health uh, for our community uh, to, uh, to take a look at. Um, so the last item um, that, uh, that I will share is, is something that you guys have indicated already. And that's uh, just a, a huge thank you uh, to, to Ann Murtha. Uh, and um, we, we look forward to actually putting this clock in your hand on, uh, on this, coming, this coming weekend uh, as we uh, really celebrate your eight years of, of commitment, of, of passion, of, of focus. Um, you've pushed us uh, as a school district, uh, much like uh, the other board members, to, uh, to be uh, a better school district and focus our efforts on what it is to, to push our children and support our children. So uh, as, as director of schools uh, for the last few years, I just want to personally thank you. Um, as you all know, I spend quite a bit of time with my individual calls to, to each of you. And, um, and, and as you know, Ann doesn't hold back. <laughs> says it uh, like, uh, like it needs to be said. So Ann, thank you for, uh, for making me an even uh, better director. Uh, and, uh, and, and thank you for, for pushing us as a school system, as, uh, as the other board members have indicated. Madam Vice Chair, that is, um, it does conclude my, my comments. Thank you. If no other business, this meeting is adjourned. Good night. Good night. Good night.